Hey everyone, I'm Nick, and this is Software Development with C++. So in this episode of the series, we're going to be talking about header files. So it's often the case where the implementation of, say, some function that we're trying to use exists in a separate place than the source where we're trying to use that function. Now, I think a great example of this is with our standard library. So things from our standard library are going to be typically implemented in something like a shared library, like a libstudc++.so or libc++.so. And this is something that we'll link against right when we're trying to make an executable. But we still have to handle the problem of, you know, we need to give our compiler some context about, say, the functions and classes that we're trying to use. And the way that we typically do this is through header files, right? And these header files will contain, say, the interfaces of the classes and the, um, say, functions that we're trying to use, say, from some library or just some other source. So what we're trying, what we're going to be looking at today is kind of the basics of these header files and how we use them, and a bit about the include directives that we use to include header files. Now let's go ahead and get started, and we can go ahead and open up our simple program today, this main.cpp. So our program here is pretty simple. All we have is a main function that's trying to call this thing called print that takes an integer and eventually returns zero. Now the problem here, if we just tried to compile this all the way to an executable, is that our compiler has no idea what print is. So when we get to the compilation phase, our compiler is going to yell at us and say, you know, we have no idea what print is. So if we go ahead and minimize this and try to compile this main.cpp and create an executable called main, you can see it says that, you know, error, print was not declared within this scope. We haven't given our compiler enough context in order to compile our program. Now, in this case, our print function is coming from this print.cpp, so it's inside of a different source file. So, you know, because it's inside of this different source file, our compiler, right, when we're just compiling main.cpp by itself, has no idea what this print.cpp is. We have to tell our compiler what this function is before we can use this. Now, the typical way that we do this is through by declaring, say, some function ahead of time. So what we can do is we can tell our compiler, hey, you know, somewhere there exists some function called print that takes some integer, right? We don't have to give our compiler the full implementation, but we have to give our compiler enough information, so something like the function signature, in order for a compiler to be able to generate a call to this function. We can worry about where this function exists at link time now. So we can go ahead and save this now that we've given our uh, We've given our compiler enough context, and we can try to compile this again. So we can go ahead and run G++ again on main.cpp. You can see we fail later on. So we get all the way through compilation, but now we're failing at our linker. So this linker LD. So it says undefined reference to some function print here, right? Uh, that takes an integer. So, you know, all this is really saying is that, hey, I see that you're trying to use some function called print, but I never did get that um, the actual implementation here. So we end up failing at link time, right, with our linker here. Now, if we go back into our main.cpp here, right, and we look at this function declaration, this declaration is typically going to come from some header file, right? So for example, if we want to use something like studcout, we first have to include IO stream. And the same is true for things that we implement ourselves. So in this case, this print function here, we've implemented a header for, right? And it's going to be in this print.h. So oftentimes you'll see this .h or .hh or .hpp used as an extension for header files here. And you can see that we just have, you know, the same kind of declaration of some function called print here. So these header files will often just contain the interfaces of things like functions that we're trying to use. Okay, so what we can do is we can go ahead and get rid of this declaration we've written ourselves, and instead we can just include this header file here. Now, we've used these this include you know directive a number of times in, say, our C++ from scratch series to include things from um, the standard library, but we haven't really talked about how we include, say, our own headers here. And I think you know a great way to talk about that is in the context of um, our... Uh, our reference uh, documents here from GCC, right, for the compiler that we're using or compiler driver. So here I've got the uh, GCC reference here for uh, include syntax pulled up on the right hand side of the screen. And it tells us these two different um, include directive uh, piece of syntax that we have here. Now, the one that we're most familiar with is with these angle brackets here. So we try to include with some file that's, you know, surrounded by these angle brackets. Now, this is a format that we typically use for system header files, right? And what our preprocessor will do as part of you know, generating executable 
is it will search for a file named file here, right? So for example, if we include IO stream, it will look for a file named IO stream inside of a standard list of system directories, right? So a compiler or a compiler driver knows a few standard places to look for, say, these headers. And we can append to that list of directories to search in with this dash I option or capital I. Now on the other side of things, we have another syntax for this, uh, this include directive. And this is when our file is surrounded by quotes here. And this is the variant we use for files or header files from our own program. So with this form, right, um, our compiler will first search in, um, you know, in the directory um, containing say our current file. So it'll search in say main.cpp where we're using this include directive first to try to find say some header. And then it will eventually use the same directories as say, um, you know, these normal uh, system directories that we use for things like our, um, you know, IO stream, for example. And we can also add directories to this list to search for using the dash lowercase I quote option. So if we go ahead and minimize this, we can actually see these directories by playing around with G++. So we can do G++, we can use the dash V to set the verbose option, dash X to specify the language as C++, and then we can say we want to just stop after pre-processing, right? And then we can just pass it some dummy thing to try to pre-process. So we can pass it, pass it slash dev slash null here. So it prints out a whole bunch of stuff, but kind of the key part that we care about is right here. Right. You can see the list of directories that our compiler is searching in for these header files. So it says that, you know, hash include with quotes is going to start search here. And you can see there's no directory specified right now. And then hash include with these uh, angle brackets is going to start here. And you can see there's a whole bunch of directories pre-specified to search for um, for these header files. So this user includes C++11, user include x86-64, Linux GNU, C++11, and so on and so forth here. So that's where, say, our standard library headers are going to be included, right? So our preprocessor is just going to search through these directories for things like IO stream and algorithm and random. Okay, now you can also see that we can append to these directories. So it says that we can use, you know, dash I to you know, include directories for this search. And then we can use dash I quote to include directories to start at, right, for this quote search here. So if we do say dash I, and then we specify something like, you know, say a resource directory for this repository, you can see that that's now included inside of this, um, this angle bracket search here. And if we change this dash uppercase I to something like I quote, that will now be added to say this I quote, you know, search path. So it will search here first before defaulting to the system directories, right? So that's a little bit about how we can include directories for a compiler to search them. All right, so let's go ahead and go back to our example at hand here. So we want to include this file here, this print.h, so that we get this uh, declaration of this function print. So to do that, because this is just in the same directory as main.cpp. I can just do this include directive and use the quotes and include print.h here, right? And that's all I really need to do to, right, to get the contents of this file here, right? With this uh, this this quote search, it's going to look inside of the uh, uh, the directory containing the current file. So it's going to look in the directory containing main.cpp for this print.h file. So it should work just fine. So we can go ahead and uh, you know quit out of here, and then we can just run say preprocessing to make sure everything worked. So we can do G++ with this dash E on main.cpp, and you can see that it was able to find this print.h, and we got this declaration here of some function called print, right? So void print that takes some integer a, right? Right above our main function here. Now, like I said, we still can't compile this all the way down to an executable. So if we try to do that again, um, you can see we still have this linker problem. We're still going to need the implementation coming from print.cpp, right? So what we can do though, is we can compile both of these sources down to object code, and then we can link them together, right? So we can't say just compile print.cpp all the way down to an executable. If we try to do that, um, right, our linker is going to yell at us, right, saying that we have an undefined reference to main. So every single C++ executable has to have a main function, right? So we can't just compile our print.cpp that only has this print function inside of it. But what we can do, like I said, is compile both of these sources 
down to object code and then link them together. So let's go ahead and see how we can do that. So first we can go ahead and just compile down to object code main.cpp and call our output just something like main.o and we'll pass the dash c option to um, go through all go all the way through pre-processing then compilation then assembly right but not go all the way to linking so you can see now we have this main.o and you know we can go ahead and disassemble this with uh, objdump dash dc run it on main.o and you can see that we have our main function in here it's setting up a call to our print right we still don't know what the implementation of this print is but we're setting up a call to it right because we had that context from that declaration okay now, if we go ahead and look at the symbols for this, uh, this main.o, you can see we have an undefined symbol for print here, right? So we have a, you know, print inside of this, uh, you know, a call to print, but we still don't know where the implementation is. So the symbol is still undefined. All right, now let's do the same thing for print.cpp. So we can do this exact same thing, right? Pass print.cpp, create a piece of object code, just called print, and then use dash C to say stop after assembly. All right, so now we have, a, oh, let's go ahead and call this print.o instead, right? So now we have this uh, print.o file, this object code. If we go ahead and run nm on print.o, you can see that it does define this. Uh, it, it does have this symbol called print here. So now we just have to link these two things together. Main.o that wants to use print and print.o that contains the implementation of print. So let's go ahead and do that. And again, we can do this with G++. So we can do G++, pass in both main.o and print.o and create an executable of these two, um, just called say main here. Okay. So now we successfully generate an executable. If we go ahead and do nm on main here, and we just, you know, grep for print, you can see we have the symbol here that's defined, right? So we are able to link together you know, some source that wanted to use a function and then our source that actually had the implementation of that function, right? So now we see that it's implemented, right? And we have that implementation inside of our main executable. So we can, of course, go ahead and run this and we get our output here, printing the integer 10, right? Okay, so that's gonna go ahead and do it for today. today. The basics of how we kind of work with these header files. So these header files typically just include um, the interfaces for things like these structs, classes and functions that we want to use that may be implemented somewhere else. So say in something like a library, like a shared library, uh, like is the case for our standard library. Now, as always, you can find this or any of my other content um, at uh, github.com slash coffee before arch. So you can find all of these examples on there. And of course, I'll link this uh, include syntax GCC page below the video. But that's going to go ahead and do it for today. As always, I'm Nick, and I hope you have a nice day.